What do the Fonz and Iron Man have in common? Find out as two legends of the entertainment industry battle it out. We'll be traveling through space, racing Formula One cars, bringing CGI animals to life, and generally finding all sorts of drama as we take a look at the careers of two of the most important figures still working in the industry today, Ron Howard and Jon Favreau, in this episode of Face Off. Before we ring the bell on this heavyweight rumble, if you enjoy this sort of content, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. It's what Richie Cunningham would do. You better believe it. Ron Howard's career has been both varied and expansive, and as he approaches age 70, his IMDb page involves a lot of scrolling. The son of actors Rance Howard and Gene Spiegel, Ron started his Hollywood career in front of the camera as a boy on The Twilight Zone and a couple hundred episodes of The Andy Griffith Show as Opie, the son of Sheriff Andy Taylor. He went on to appear in the critically acclaimed The Music Man from 1962, being credited as Ronnie Howard in those early days, before being cast in George Lucas's classic 1973 coming-of-age drama American Graffiti. That led to what is arguably his most recognizable and humorous role on Happy Days as good old American funny guy Richie Cunningham, best friend and confidant to the legendary Arthur the Fonz Fonzarelli, a character presented as the epitome of cool. <laughs> Howard plays Cunningham with charm, warmth, and wit, and looking back on the role now, you can see how it helped shape his future career as a successful director and producer. <sighs> how do you feel? I gotta take a piss. A native of Queens, New York, John Favreau found his own way into the entertainment biz. He studied acting for a while before the untimely death of his mother during childhood. He dropped in and out of Queens College for a while before finally pursuing a career in comedy, moving to Chicago and performing at several improv theaters, including the Improv Olympic and the Improv Institute. This led to his first film role alongside Sean Astin in the 1993 football sleeper Rudy where he met future friend and collaborator Vince Vaughn. That partnership led to a breakthrough role in 1996's Swingers, which he also co-wrote. The late 90s also saw Favreau land a part on the hit comedy show Friends as Monica Geller's millionaire boyfriend who competes in the Ultimate Fighting Championships. His trajectory from stand-up to leading man over the course of a few years is impressive. However, Howard had Hollywood in his blood, and for the earlier start and more celebrated roles, this round goes to Ron Howard. Depending on your age, you might know Ron Howard nowadays more for his directing rather than his acting. However, anyone who grew up in the 70s would most likely say that Richie Cunningham is his most defining role. Sure, he started as a child actor, but it's Fonzie's pal that shines brighter than any other part he's played. Richie was the fictional embodiment of the quintessential 1950s teenager with his wholesome demeanor, plus that red hair and freckles. Cunningham did occasionally get into some trouble, but never with malice and usually in some scheme to attract girls. I found my thrill. <laughs> Howard plays Richie with such affable charm, and although Henry Winkler's Fonzie overshadowed him to a certain extent, Howard still appeared first in the credits. It's kind of a shame that audiences never got to see much of Howard's acting once Happy Days concluded in 1984, but that loss was ultimately the gain of the directing world, as he pursued a career behind the camera not long after the show ended. John Favreau is a bit surprising because, unless you're familiar with his career and accomplishments, you wouldn't expect him to be both a director and an actor. Like Howard, he started out in more comedic roles, but went on to show a decent acting range. And unlike his competitor in this battle, Favreau has managed to frequently mix both acting and directing. His role as D-Bob in Rudy is like that big mouth nerd at school that you can't help but like, and becomes the person who lifts you up when you're down. His acting ability is on display in another football movie, The Replacements, playing a character who doesn't back down and won't hesitate to go full megaton on somebody without worrying about the consequences. His early roles in Very Bad Things and Swingers are superb, but it's most likely his turn as Tony Stark's friend and bodyguard Happy Hogan in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that most people recognize him from now. When it comes to acting, Favreau has proven that he can hold his own, and it's his impressive array of characters and current roles that give him the edge this round. Ron Howard is no stranger to the world of Star Wars and was even considered by George Lucas to direct Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace, back in the late 90s. 
Howard's daughter, Bryce Dallas Howard, continues to establish herself as an accomplished director with episodes of The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett. However, this is not Bryce's face-off. So what exactly has Ron Howard brought to the hollow chess table? For starters, when directors Phil Lord and Chris Miller exited the controversial Han Solo, uh, Solo movie, Howard boarded the Falcon to save the day. You can argue whether or not a Han Solo standalone movie was a good idea, but despite its issues, Howard stepped up and delivered a film that, if nothing else, was competently directed with some solid set pieces. Even though no one is able to replace Harrison Ford as Solo, Howard still managed to make an entertaining movie. It's a shame he hasn't had more opportunities in the Star Wars galaxy, as with the right script and material, he could knock it out of the arena. The recent Disney Plus Obi-Wan series arrived with much fanfare, but arguably delivered little of its promise to give a rollicking, cohesive story to a fan favorite, even bringing back both Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen to duke it out again, or run away. Did it underwhelm because of the lack of involvement from Jon Favreau, who helped reinvigorate the franchise with The Mandalorian, which many view as the best thing to happen to Star Wars recently? Favreau was the man behind the inception of that series, and the introduction of the immensely popular Grogu, or Baby Yoda as he's been affectionately called. While there's no shortage of Star Wars shows now and in the near future, the ones involving Favreau seem to be the strongest with the Force. The Star Wars universe can be tough to crack for even the most talented filmmakers in the world, so this round goes to the guy who seems to have the golden touch, Jon Favreau. Making the transition from acting to directing can be a daunting task, and in the past there have been some wonderful movies made by former actors, and some absolute stinkers. Ron Howard got his feet wet by directing shorts and TV movies until 1983's Splash, starring Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah as the sexiest fish person ever. Sorry, Doug. The film shot Howard to fame as a director and led the way for 1985's charming Cocoon. His earlier work may be stronger than more recent efforts, and despite popular opinion, he's managed to forge a distinctive style in many of his movies. For example, some of his better efforts like Rush, A Beautiful Mind, Frost Nixon, Cinderella Man, and Apollo 13 share common themes such as technology, rivalries, and human fortitude. The beloved 1988 fantasy Willow has seen a resurgence with a new sequel series, with Howard returning as executive producer. For all the hits, though, come the falls, and for every Frost Nixon, there's a hillbilly elegy or the dilemma. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna come up with something better than that. Despite all the praise we've lavished upon Jon Favreau for his part in resurrecting the Star Wars franchise, the director has also had his share of misfires over the years as well. His first space adventure, Zathura, didn't exactly blow up the box office, barely grossing its budget. On paper, teaming James Bond with Indiana Jones probably seemed like a surefire winner, but that was not the case with the criminally disappointing Cowboys and Aliens, an action sci-fi western mashup megaflop with great visuals, but overall a mess with both lead actors phoning in their performances. However, Favreau's good movies outweigh the bad, and Iron Man will forever be renowned for not only kickstarting the MCU, but also resuscitating the career of Robert Downey Jr. The charm and visual panache of The Jungle Book match the warmth and wit of Chef, while 2003's Elf is a holiday classic that gets better every Christmas. Favreau has crafted his own filmmaking style and further pushed movie-making technology with his record-breaking blockbuster remake of The Lion King. But in the end, this round goes to Ron Howard. Ron Howard started acting so young that he had become a TV regular by the age of five, and before he hit puberty, he was already a household name on The Andy Griffith Show. That kind of career trajectory has been the downfall of other child stars, but it only served to give Howard a healthy respect for the industry, as well as a passion to move behind the scenes once his turn on Happy Days came to an end. That passion can be seen in his best directing efforts, and he has many iconic moments etched in the minds of moviegoers all over the world. Apollo 13 is often considered his best film, and in the wrong hands could have come off as overly cheesy or corny, but Howard delivers it with a great amount of precision, sincerity, heart, and emotion. Another example of Howard bringing the feels is 1989's Parenthood, with a superb ensemble balancing the hardships of being parents and kids in late 80s America. Seriously, with this cast, Steve Martin and Keanu Reeves and Jason Robards and Mary Steenburgen and Rick Moranis and Joaquin Phoenix, Howard makes this tricky kind of filmmaking seem easy, just as he has on many other movies like Willow, Backdraft, and Frost Nixon, to name a few. 
When you think of iconic moments from the career of Jon Favreau, what comes to mind first? His awesome turn as a struggling actor and comedian in 1996's Swingers, which he also co-wrote and produced? That sleeper helped catapult both Favreau and co-star Vince Vaughn into bankable movie stars and features endlessly quotable dialogue. Bring a single malted uh, Glengarry for me and one for my boy Mikey here. And if you tell the bartender to go easy on the water, then this 50 cent piece has your name written all over it. Mike, I'm telling you, you're money. You're so fucking money. No, baby, you're money. All you're right. so you're so money and you don't even know it. That's what I keep trying to tell you. So Could you not mess with me right now? Or what about the black comedy, Very Bad Things, about a bachelor party gone extremely wrong? It's a precursor to the likes of the Hangover trilogy and features a game cast reveling in the mayhem. From a directing perspective, there's his big budget eye in 2008's Iron Man with many unforgettable scenes. Tony in the SUV with the soldiers, the creation of the Mark I armor, the full reveal of the first classic Iron Man suit, and all of Stark's endlessly quotable lines. You've been called the Da Vinci of our time. What do you say to that? Absolutely ridiculous, I don't paint. You douse me again, and I'm not on fire, I'm donating you to City College. Hey Tony, remember me? Sure don't. Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. One of Favreau's most simple yet effective recent movies is 2014's Chef, in which he directs himself as an acclaimed chef who turns to a more simple life in a food truck after being fired by his famous restaurant. It's a poignant reminder that the most simple filmmaking can sometimes be the most memorable. Still, although he didn't make us quite as hungry with any of his movies, we gotta give this round to Ron Howard. <laughs> While there's no doubt that both filmmakers slash actors have an impressive array of roles and movies behind them, what does the future hold? It's about a killer robot driving instructor that travels back in time for some reason. I'm listening. The most intriguing project on Ron Howard's directing slate is a return to sci-fi, adapting author Neil Stevenson's book Seven Eves, a far future tale about the remnants of mankind surviving in space. He also has The Fixer, a drama about a former FBI agent recruited for a joint CIA mafia mission to assassinate Fidel Castro. And there's The Shrinking of Treehorn, following a young man who begins shrinking in size after playing a strange board game. And there's his producing duties on the aforementioned Willow series, as well as an assortment of TV shows and documentaries. Perhaps the biggest movie for director Jon Favreau is the upcoming sequel, The Jungle Book 2, following his hugely successful 2016 movie that showcased a beautiful mix of live action and CGI to terrific effect. But as a producer is where his hotly anticipated content is, with the Rosario Dawson-fronted Star Wars spin-off Ahsoka lighting up its twin sabers plus the new show Skeleton Crew, about a group of kids in the Star Wars universe. And of course, the highly anticipated third season of The Mandalorian, and with Grogu obviously back for more hijinks and critter consumption, the series has a lot to live up to for fans who may have been burned by The Book of Boba Fett and Obi-Wan. Can Howard's upcoming projects compete with Ahsoka and Grogu force-choking some bad guys? Pass. <sighs> what else you got? Straight off the bat, Ron Howard can claim ownership of two coveted golden statues with Oscars for both Best Picture and Best Director for A Beautiful Mind. He was also nominated for both those awards with the classy Frost Nixon, and over at the BAFTAs, he has no wins but several nominations for a number of movies, including A Beautiful Mind, Rush, and The Beatles' Eight Days a Week for Best Documentary. Howard has also been nominated for several Golden Globes for another long list of his movies. To his credit, he did take a Golden Globe Award for Best Actor in a Television Series for Happy Days back in 1978, and also won the Best Picture Golden Globe for A Beautiful Mind. It's an impressive count of wins and nominations, demonstrating his pedigree in features and TV. While Jon Favreau is younger than Howard by over a decade, he has still collected plenty of accolades along the way. While he has not been nominated for the more prestigious Oscars or BAFTAs, he does have a number of other awards and nominations, including Saturn Awards for Best Director and the Visionary Award for Iron Man, plus a Saturn nom for Best Director on The Jungle Book. He also received a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Visual Effects Society Awards in 2018, and The Mandalorian has picked up a handful of Emmy Awards, although none for Best Series or Director. This round goes to Ron Howard. It's been a bruising battle, and despite these two legends of Hollywood going toe-to-toe -to -toe for the majority of the contest, there can only be one winner. This face-off overall goes to Ron Howard. Howard, you've done it again. These happy days are yours. 
let us know your thoughts. Leave a comment in the comments. And thanks for watching.